It's a largely unseen collection of ancient statues that could become the art world's next big thing. And Seth Doan has a preview. Antiquities are everywhere in the Italian capital, but incredibly, one of the most important collections was hidden away for decades. It's like having 600 plus works of art drop out of the sky. Archaeologist Darius Aria met us at Rome's Capitoline Museum. This figure right here is just out of the textbooks. I mean, this is the sort of thing that we've all studied, but we've never seen. It's the first time in about 70 years these pieces are on public display. Is there any way to rank this collection? <laughs> this is at the top. This is the greatest private collection of ancient Roman antiquity. It belongs to one of Rome's most powerful aristocratic families, the Torlonias, who over generations spent their banking fortune accruing art. It's the who's who of antiquity here. Busts of every emperor, sarcophagi, and reliefs. This guy is arriving with the ship. The 94 ancient Greek and Roman marbles on exhibition are just a fraction of the 620 owned by the noble family. Why did this sit locked away for so long? It's just very complicated. You have many different intentions of, of a family. You have many different intentions of the city. You have many properties. You have great costs. Let's just say it took a while to work out the details. Over the years, the Italian state tried to persuade the Torlonias to sell or display the works. Plans to create a museum repeatedly fell through. Instead, the statues sat locked away in this Rome neighborhood until February of last year when we were allowed in. So here we have uh, a... We cannot very, reveal the exact location. Uh, beautiful figure. Wow. But archaeologist Salvatore Settis, the exhibit curator, let us get a glimpse before the precious marbles went on display. They were still restoring them after sitting here out of sight for decades. Did you know that this collection was just somewhere waiting to be seen? Everybody knows this. He knew because Prince Alessandro Torlonia published this catalog in the 1880s. A catalog doesn't seem strange to us today, but this in no. the late 1800s was very unusual. It was very unusual. Each piece photographed and numbered, but viewable only in 2D. It's incredible to be surrounded by all of this. Yeah. Uh, because each and every one of those pieces has a different story. And the collection also serves as a history of restoration techniques. All this part is, is not ancient. All this part was added. While today we'd leave fragments. This is the authentic piece and this is not. In the past, the style was to reconstruct what was missing. One of the statues uh, was put together probably in 17th century out of 112 different pieces wow. of at least three different qualities of marble. Sometimes the newer additions are more significant. The head on this ancient goat was added around 1620 by famed sculptor John Lorenzo Bernini. The head is spectacularly beautiful. The Torlonia family acquired pieces through the purchase of villas packed with art and sometimes carried out their own archaeological excavations on their properties. When I first came in here, I was uh, surprised by the number, though I knew the number. So if you knew the number, why were you surprised? Because seeing things and, and, uh, in a book and seeing things in the real world is a totally different thing. It was a really moving, a really a great experience. It's an experience more can have. The marbles are set to travel across Europe and likely to the U.S. as this remarkable record of our collective history is finally shared.